uh, kita sekarang akan uh, proceed to the next uh, panelist. Uh, Professor Madia Dr. Azlida Firza, okay, seorang pakar Family Medicine uh, Perubatan Keluarga di Fakulti Perubatan Pusat Perubatan Universiti Kebangsaan Malaysia. Yang mempunyai ijazah sajana dalam bidang perubatan uh, Family Medicine Perubatan Keluarga dan PhD dalam bidang Community Health, Kesihatan Community. Gabungan prinsip-prinsip asas perubatan keluarga untuk mengoptimumkan penyampaian penjagaan prima untuk penjagaan stroke jangka masa panjang merupakan kepakaran Prof. Madya Dr. Aznida yang kini merupakan Knight President Malaysian Health Economics Association ya, Mahia, from 2018 to 2023. Untuk pengetahuan peserta, Prof. Madya Dr. Aznida hari ini akan berkongsi pengalaman beliau dalam kapasiti anak kepada ibu bapa yang mempunyai kemerosotan kognitif. Ya. So she's not speaking as a pakar uh, perubatan but she's speaking as a loving daughter who has taken care of um, parents, yeah, aging parents. Uh, selamat pagi Dr. Aznida, terima kasih kerana sudi bersama kami hari ini. Selamat pagi Dr. Tenggrani. Okay. Untuk sesi ini, Dr. Aznida akan berkongsi pengalaman beliau selama 20 minit dan jika masa membenarkan, saya akan bertanya beberapa soalan yang relevan uh, uh, about subjek perkongsian beliau. Ya? Silakan Dr. Aznida. Okey, terima kasih. Saya uh, sharekan sedikit slide. Kenapa sejak ya? Dia. Can you see your slides? Uh, um, sorry. I can't uh, see it yet. Okay, tak apa. But it's okay. I, I will just... Um, Summarize sebab cepat. <laughs> I think, uh, are you sharing your slides, uh, doctor? Dia punya, there's a problem with the, with the, ni, with my computer, dia tak mau pick up I the, uh, but that's okay. Uh, saya speak off the cuff lah, ya. Yeah. Alright. Uh, alright. Um, first of all, uh, ter terima kasih lah. Uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me. Um, banyak yang dah dikongsikan dengan uh, ahli panel dan uh, speaker sebelum ni memang macam Tuan Fauzan tadi cakap lah memang rasa macam terkena lah dekat uh, muka sendiri macam uh, um, the presenters and Tuan OJ punya experience tu macam it hits you personally and it's, you feel that the whole conversation is uh, relevant to you lah. Okay. So, um, saya nak cerita sikit sebab uh, latar belakang saya, saya ada ibu bapa saya dah dalam lingkungan umur 80-an. Uh, masih aktif, Alhamdulillah. Dan uh, saya ada, saya uh, adik-beradik ada lima orang. Uh, lima orang, uh, all professionals. Four are in Malaysia and one is in uh, based in UK. Um, So um, kita bercerita pasal um, kemerosotan kognitif ni atau early uh, cognitive decline, uh, mild cognitive decline. Sebenarnya ramai orang akan ber, uh, umum mengetahui pasal dementia tapi tak ramai orang yang perasan eh, sebelum uh, dementia tu set in dia dah ada petanda-petanda awal. Dan petanda-petanda awal ni um, Pesakit selalunya dia sendiri tak perasan Tapi orang yang uh, duduk serumah Yang menjaga akan perasan um, uh, Satu changes lah yang yang berlaku uh, And then I must share that Because I am an academic And, and the work that I do um, if Saya sendiri pun macam mereka Tak tak perasan benda ni berlaku lah Until ada beberapa insiden yang uh, memang make me terduduk lah and 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 ripping lah balik kan macam I treat so many patients what happens in the house I I pun boleh terlepas pandang lah but that's happen they always say that you should never treat your own family members first kan sebab the judgement tu is um, uh, impact because of a lot of things So, nombor satu memang denial lah. And denial 
um, and then gradually alhamdulillah ada acceptance by uh, caregivers and then how you cope to memang different people have different coping styles okay some are extremely very strong and some can be very theory when listening to others like me okay and but what is the best thing um, that comes from realization and acceptance so kita we try and make uh, preparation lah for um, the impending outcome lah kan macam we know for a certain part that um that some parts will get worse but we can try to prepare ourselves as much as possible lah yeah? so dalam uh, my my session my sharing experience ni i have uh, three big bubbles lah yang that come up to my number satu is um, communication uh, number dua is um, um, preparation uh, preparation um, for the inevitable and the other one um, actually the, the strongest thing is your faith lah ya. keimanan dan kepercayaan lah which can uh, help to um, be some short absorber lah to, to, to your everyday life lah so communication um, a lot of um, has already been mentioned by the other speakers but personally walaupun saya tahu the, the theory behind it but it never um, I was not able to apply it to my own uh, situation until a few things happened um, my parents were both uh, admitted for COVID uh, uh, was it May and June this year, and they were both admitted um at the same time, and they stayed in the hospital for sixteen days. So uh, that was a really um challenging time. Uh, and and the worst thing about COVID is when you have uh your loved ones pass to hospital, um. I, like uh, Tuan OJ, I myself drove my parents at that time. The height of uh, COVID um, infection the Selangor was at its worst. Worst lah, CAC, Melawati, um, ambulance pun tak ada. <laughs> you call uh, and nobody from KKM came when we were test when we tested positive. And nak like, inform pun tak tahu masa tu. My suggestor also was having a lot of problems at that time. So I drove um, uh, I drove my parents to the hospital and when I just dropped them at emergency department, I never saw them again for the next 16 days. And then um, at that time, my, my elder sister is a breast surgeon. Um, she felt um, that she needed to communicate um, with us, um, my sister was in the same hospital where my, my parents were admitted. So she at least was able to go and visit them. Tapi memang dia kena pakai PPE lah. Uh, and at that time, baru kita uh, to, to, to make sure that everybody in Malaysia and in UK knew what was happening. Memang dia letak um, a, a group um, WhatsApp and uh, adik-beradik je lah. Um, at that time, without spouses and until today, we still have that WhatsApp group and it's entitled Abba and Mama situation. <laughs> so everything that goes in uh, uh, about medical um, and uh, follow-up plans, semua masuk dalam tu so that nobody will be left out. So, and then saya dengan kakak pun um, tak payah nak berulang-ulang cakap benda yang sama lah. So that's how we found out that um, communication uh, is the best investment if you have a uh, very ill parents and, and and one thing that we noticed that the content dekat dalam tu please avoid drama facts is facts and then uh, memang uh, masa tu we are very specific in what we want we will say that okay we need help like this uh, we need help like that or we have an appointment and who can go but most of the time it's um, fallen the responsibility to actually cater to the medical problems is left to my sister and myself because the other three are totally non-medical and memang don't like hospitals and very <laughs> They, they fall sick if they visit the hospital, they become queasy and all that. So, but but that's okay. To what they cannot contribute in terms of time and commitment, 
they make up for something else. And but the best thing about it is um communicating with my parents while they are in hospital and um and learning um teaching my dad to use video call. Okay. And then um uh, I also have another separate WhatsApp group with wonderful in-laws who are very understanding. And um, and one thing that is strong in my family is every week, memang, even without COVID, um, he, my siblings make it a point to come and visit my parents uh, or at least call. And dekat UK, memang every week, since he has been away for more than 10 years, he will call and and touch base and memang to to make sure that um uh apa ni the memory uh, memory aspect to is um updated and they are familiar because uh, i also have um experience with on the in law side where my husband's grandmother um has alzheimers and it and towards the end to memang very challenging like every few minutes, they will just ask, um, kamu bila datang? Kau nak siapa? Repeatedly. And 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 this is the uh, the pattern that I can foresee. Uh, although I hope that it won't get to that, that bad stage for my parents. But I, I, I do understand that there will be um, moments where they have mentioned repeated, uh, like one issue, um, repeatedly over the next few weeks um, padahal kita dah discuss dah but it's always like macam kita dah detour balik to square one right did you know about this 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 yes but masa awal tu memang kita tak faham macam for me in the night I say yeah mom we discussed about that like yesterday I was there with you I I went with you to that place don't you remember so I decided to uh, to eliminate that part in the conversation and I always have to, uh, I, I look it like, oh yeah, I'm hearing it for the first time. So that, that the perasaan yang tersinggung lah. And after a while, belum tu, it was a bit difficult, but now I am always in that mode. And I, and what's also important because in the, in the house, I stay with my parents and my two children. My my daughters initially, they, they're now teenage. Um, they, kenapa? Tok Abah, Tok Mama cakap macam tu. Hmm, kan benda tu kita dah buat bersama. Kita dah cakap. So, then I have to explain to them that um, this is the, the cause of the um, condition, the illness. And everybody is going to be old and we need to be alert. And for one thing, we must always remain respectful. And they cannot help themselves. So, and most of the time, they don't know that they are in that repetitive phase. Um, in terms of preparation, um, selalu ada tiga tajuk besar, um, biological, um, pasal frailty ni, biological one, psychological, preparedness, and lagi satu is soci sociological lah. Um, biological, um, we see them deteriorating um, uh, dalam cara um, frail, especially pun after COVID, even before COVID tu dah memang frail, tak berapa larat, and, but after COVID tu pun ada ada sikit-sikit, dia macam dia tak berapa minat sangat, but but they are stable lah, Alhamdulillah um, and um, and you see medical conditions kan, kalau macam uh, sebelum ni, they only have very few medical problems, tapi as the, the age advances, uh, there will be new things, new problems. Um, for example, vision, hearing. And hearing too is a bit uh, challenging also. Sometimes you cakap kan? And then you, they, 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 they rasa, nampak macam dia tak indah apa yang cakap, tapi actually sebab dia tak dengar. And then, um, scenario balik daripada kerja, dengar TV so loud, like down the street tu, that is uh, quite common lah for me. And then, come in and I see, what's happening that? Oh, tengah tengok TV, tengah tengok sport, tapi <laughs> rumah sound macam stadium. <laughs> so, the, okay, and then you have to, um, it's, it's them having hearing impairment lah. Uh, and another big issue is also false lah. Dalam rumah sendiri, home accidents, 
um, become a bit more frequent because dia frail kan uh, and then sindrom ada tongkat tapi tak macho lah kalau guna tongkat tak mau guna tongkat tapi bila dah jatuh baru nak guna tongkat lah okay so that's one and then um, psychological ni um, uh, a big issue juga um, but of late ni you notice that um, bila dia rendah umur dah meningkat kan almost every other week ada saja kawan-kawan atau saudara yang meninggal uh, and then uh, sentence ni memang kerap lah disebut kata my kawan semua dah meninggal uh, I don't have any more friends uh, tu yang part tu yang sedih lah jadi itu jadi peringatan jugalah pada saya uh, you must have friends from different age groups because you don't know how long you're going to survive uh, so you friends are very important because uh, sometimes things that you want to share with your friends you can't really talk to your family members then uh, so i i get a lot of support from my father's friends so sometimes tell me your father tak nak buat ni lah the father says you're too controlling lah <laughs> so itulah so that's one of the things and uh, another thing uh, so- sociological um, support um when my, my parents have actually in an informal way given me and my siblings advanced directives advanced directives ni macam if i fall sick if i fall really ill uh, please make sure that you don't attach me to the um apa tu um, ventilation don't intubate me for long times don't need to go all out for the Uh, CPR if I collapse because we have lived our lives at 80 we have lived our lives um, we get to let us go peacefully so dia dah cakap lah dia dah cakap um, and we have to respect it lah and then the other thing is um, finances um, simple things like going to the bank to do ATM ATM card be stuck in the machine sebab reflexes slow. Uh, so benda tu uh, kena prihati sikit lah. So for my parents, for the last uh, 10 years uh, actually, um, internet banking has helped me to help them to monitor and support systems. Um, I am fortunate I have my children and my and a helper who has been with us for 10 years and who also has uh, noticed the gradual decline and is very attuned lah to um, the changes. And last but not least, um, your faith lah keeps you strong. I think that one is pretty well. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Um, Dr. Azida, I think we still have about um, five minutes. So okay. I shall ask you some questions, you know. Um, It's so interesting right. how you, um, uh, um, you know, categorized um, your experience into the communication issues, the preparation part, and the faith. You know, um, I mean, I, I, th- I thought it was very interesting when you mentioned about, um, you know, you don't remind your parents that um, if they've forgotten some things. You know, and I think this is a question of uh, dignity. You know, um, I think when people get old what they usually feel that is that the children do not respect their dignity their self respect that they, they lose it you know uh, because they become so dependent on 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 the children or, or the caretakers i'm mean, sorry the yeah. caregivers right yeah. okay so i think that was very sensitive of you and your family to to do that you know and and you say that even um, hearing problems right i mean you just let them be right <laughs> Uh, yes. I think I may, I may not I, I may be able to relate to you in a certain way because I've cared for aging parents as well even though they were not ill. But these are small things. Sometimes we tend to forget that um, you've got to be sensitive to their needs, you know, and you don't tell them things like uh, you know, hey, you know, it's too loud, you know, and and you're speaking too loud. Why why are you speaking too loud? You know, because actually they cannot hear you, yes. right? Um, so the sensitivity, I think, is is, is very crucial. So uh, let's look at some questions um, that I have. Ah, uh, yeah, Doctor Asnido. Okay. Um, what do you think um, children should do to restore the dignity of elderly and ill parents who become physically dependent on their children or their caregivers? Okay. Um, I I 
I try a bit of um, uh, reverse psychology um, with them. I don't say I'm taking care of them. I always tell them they're the ones who's taking care of me. Because I'm, I'm, I am the only child that technically has never left home <laughs> since I was born. So the other, other siblings got married and, and, and left and have homes of their own. So I, I have a home of my own, but uh, the last, I think, uh, almost 10 years, I had to abandon the plan of living in my own um, apartment and stay because a few times that I left, the uh, home accidents did happen. Uh, so, so in the end, I was I, my my mom also picks up on on the idea that, uh, yeah, 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 no, we're taking care of Ida and her and her kids. You know, uh, it's not the other way around. But to me, um, doesn't matter as long as uh, we achieve our objective. Lah, is to keep everybody safe and okay. to make sure that um they don't lose their dignity. Apart from one thing, that one thing that I think is the biggest challenge to robbing them the dignity is uh, the ability to drive. Now that has become a concern now because um, now the, um, when they were not well, I used to drive them around, and then and then suddenly they say things like, "I don't know, I don't know where we're going." Um, but then I say, bah, we're going to the hospital. It's the same hospital you were admitted. Uh, okay, and then I made excuses. I say that they had took a different route. So to make sure you remember, I'll go the same route. The 20 over times that we are going, I'll follow the same route. So that, that's one and yeah. All right. Okay, just one more thing, uh, Dr. Amida. Do you yeah. think the responsibility of, of caregiving for elderly parents, right? should also be borne by the next generation, meaning do you tr do, uh, can we train our, our own children to care for our parents? Do you think it's a good idea? So that they, they sort of learn, they pick up, they become sensitive to, to, to you know, the needs and that sort of thing. Uh, very early on, um, I, I had this thought um, uh, with regards to my own children. Okay. Um, being in the same house and being involved in the care, um, the, in, in the few times that uh, we discussed about this, I, I, did, I did tell uh, my children that, you know, um, when I get to the age, I hope I live as long as your grandparents have. Um, I'm not going to force you to take care of me. Uh, if you do it, you do it out of a sense of love and responsibility. But if it gets too much for you, then I say, then you need to get help to take care of me. Then I'm okay. Ask me whether I can still remember. Um, I don't hold you guilty for anything because I totally understand because I've been through the same route. Um, and then when they were small, they said, of course we'll take care of you. And then, <laughs> now that they're bigger, say. yeah, that's what I say. You, there must be a caveat. Lah. I say, okay, uh, but, but I am fine. Uh, I am fine, uh, however, uh, which way. But as Dr. Tan clearly said that, um, West Asian culture ni different, um, filial piety and kita tengok literature from Western countries pun memang lain. Um, kalau yang teruk-teruk pun anak, uh, you know, in 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 families with um, many children pun, um, the role of caregiver too, they are the very different roles and everybody tries um, to help out as much as possible. Totally different from Western population. All right. Thank you, Dr. Aznida. Uh, we'll come back to you for the questions later. Yeah, sure. so please stay on. So thank you.